before we move into the sampling techniques, we will understand what are the critical essentials of sampling that a person can face while doing the research. So representativeness. So you must select the sample in a manner which represents the universe in its truest sense. Further, if you fail to do so, then you might get misleading results. Next is adequacy. You should also select the size of sample adequately, which represents the parametric characteristics of the population. Independence. When you select a sample, you must ensure that you select the samples independently and also randomly. So this will give you a better result. Homogeneity. This is another important element of a sample investigation. Homogeneity means that there is no basic difference in the nature of units in the sample and the universe. So what are these, what we have studies, we understood they are the demerits where we can, it is the critical essential of sampling method. So we have already seen the merits which helped us uh, save our time we are reliable more. So when I say uh, they are reliable, usually the data collected under a sample investigation is reliable because of the use of well-trained and experienced investigators or experts. It also provides us detailed information since sampling is cost efficient and also time efficient. You can collect detailed information about the sample in your survey. It helps you collect richer data and a very fine data. Sometimes the goal of the research is to collect a little bit of data from a lot of people, for example, an opinion poll. And other times, the goal is to collect a lot of information from just a few people. Example is a user study or an ethnographic interview. So either way, samplings allow researcher to ask participants more questions and to gather richer data than does contacting everyone in the population. So the importance of knowing where to sample is important. Efficient sampling has a number of benefits for researcher, but just as important as knowing how to sample is, and is knowing where to sample. Some research participants are better suited for the purpose of a project than other. Finding participants that are fit for the purpose of a project is crucial. So you have to understand where your abstract is leading your research to and from where you will find a, a exact and efficient data that, or the participants from where you can get more answers to your question. This is a very crucial part, but it helps researcher to gather high quality data. So we can take an example here. So you, we, can do, we can consider an online research project where a team of researcher who decides to conduct a study online has several different sources of participants to choose from. Some source provide a random sample and many more provide a non-random sample. When selecting a non-random sample, researchers have several options to consider. Some studies are especially well suited to an online panel that offers access to millions of different participants worldwide. Other studies, meanwhile, are better suited to crowdsource site that generally has fewer participants overall, but more flexibility for fostering participants' engagement. So this is how you can conduct research for your respective topics. So further, we'll understand the sample techniques, which will give you more idea how you can do random, non-random, probability, non-probability sampling further to narrow down your research or to filter the good and qualitative data which will be considered for your research purpose. What is sampling technique? The sampling technique or the sampling method is a statistical approach used for selecting a representative sample for from a population we already studied, a representative. So what happens, I'll give you a very basic and simple idea I heard. So if I go and teach in the class of probably 160 and they, they have a different divisions called A, B, C, D, E. So each division has 160 participants. What do you think? 160 participants, will I be able to remember all this 360 or 460 
participant's name that's very difficult so when marking an attendance so my my year when i attend when i go and deliver the lecture for me it is also important to mark attendance of the part students so what happened we select certain representative of each class so that could be called as class representative or a class co course co course coordinator or xyz there are different names that we give to the representative what this representative does so the representatives because it is very difficult for every individual a 160 student uh, batch which which is a division and another b c c and d so we have around 400 or 460 in total of for one course so it is very difficult for those 460 students to come and meet me and approach for their problems so every class has their own representative from where they can go and approach them easily and that representative come to me and share the problems or the issues or also mark their attendance very easily so what happens here this makes this this makes this rigorous analysis very easy for me because we have done in a very uh, method methodical way and the approach is very simple so it involves rigorous analysis of the data gathered about the population and selecting an appropriate sample on the basis of the data so what i did here i have selected one representative for each class so there this is a very basic example to make you understand and the concept there are several different sampling techniques available which can be classified into two major categories one is probability sampling techniques second one is non probability sampling techniques so what is probability sampling the probability sampling technique uses some sort of random selection so in this method every individual of the population has an equal chance of being selected the advantage of using probability sampling is that probability sampling gives us the best chance to draw a sample that is true representative of the population however this method is more time consuming and expensive than the non probability sampling method so let's understand what is non probability sampling method so the non probability sampling method is a technique in which researcher selects the sample based on subjective judgment rather than the random selection in this method all elements do not have an equal chance of being selected consequently there is a significant risk of what ending up with a non presentative sample which does not produced a generalizable result so this is basically two types of techniques which you can utilize when you do a research and this will definitely give you some or the uh, some result which is closer to your research process